Mike, uh, going back to the offseason, do you have any reaction to the fact that a head coaching job you were up for, it turns out the guy who gets the job and the team's involved, like there are sanctions for tampering. And at the time, you think you're a finalist and have a good shot. Do you have any kind of like emotional reaction to that happening? Don't really think about it all that much outside of just the experience and um, you know being being fortunate enough to be a part of those discussions and those conversations was was really cool. Learned a lot about um, myself. Learned a lot about you know the league and the organiz and the multiple organizations. So it was a good experience overall. Mike, you obviously were around one of the best in Kelsey. Um, now you get a guy like Darren Wall. Can you talk about you know what he does for an offense and what he does for yeah. you for play call? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a, he's a really talented uh, player. He's a great person. He's a really good teammate. That's one thing I've learned about him. Um, he cares about his he cares about his guys, and um, he's competitive, which which we really like. We we value that here, and so he's doing everything we're asking him. He's he's working hard and, and putting in the time and effort to learn the offense and get in sync with with DJ and the quarterback. So. He's done a great job. Mike, how would you describe how many more options you seem to have at your disposal on game days this time around? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I mean, between the skill, the skill group, all those guys are doing a good job of getting themselves in the mix and trying to identify a role for themselves in a bunch of different ways, in the run game, in the pass game, um, all the different schemes that we want to try and build. Those guys are working to, to figure out a role there. And um, I mean, they're doing a great job. They're, they're flying around. Um, they're communicating well. I think when you're getting to year two of the offense, things are obviously a little bit more more smooth because you know you've heard it already a few more times and you've been through some of those situations already, and you can kind of have some stuff that you can fall back on. Is it weird without Saquon? Is it weird? Excuse me. Is it weird without Saquon? Yeah, I think you know anytime you got someone's on the field, you know there's there's obviously players that 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 you want that you want out there, and I mean Saquon's one of them, but. Not going to get, not going to get in that. When How much do you for, for, for a, um, a, a first-year coordinator to get a head coaching interview is pretty good. Um, to get four, um, was your head spinning a little bit? Um, I wouldn't say it was spinning. It was just a matter of getting prepped. It was a matter of you know identifying what you know what you wanted to present. But again, that was that was in the past. So if, you know those are, again those are good experiences, things you can fall back on. Did any, did, did people here when you was coming back? Did any player or anything? say anything to you, give you any, you know, Daniel or something like that to kind of say, you know, we're sorry you didn't get a job, but we're not sorry that you're coming. Oh, kind of oh. Um, yeah, I think, you know, when those things don't happen, it's just kind of the nature of the business. And, you know, if they don't, if they do happen, they do. If they don't, they don't. You know, you kind of just move on past it. You learn from it and you grow just like, you know, no different than I tell any of our players and when things happen. Mike, you're last year, you and Dave spoke continuously about the growth Daniel showed. What where else can he grow this year? Where are you expecting yeah. him to grow in year two of the system? Yeah, when we, when we did our scheme eval, we obviously had each each position group identified you know several things that we can look look to improve on. Um, nothing specific that I'd probably share like in a public forum, but those are things that yeah we have a plan for. We're trying to work through all the little fundamental things. So yeah, we definitely have a plan. The coaches are doing a great job of implementing that uh, in the off season. And the uh, offensive line, you have a. Um, at least from the outside looking in, it looks like you have some new pieces here. Um, how's that shaping up? Do you have mm -hmm. an idea of which way you want to go, or is it just way too early to talk about that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's early. There's, there's a lot of football to be played. We haven't even put the pads on yet, so that's that's a big part of the evaluation process, not just with the O-line, but all the position groups and the physicality of it. So, yeah, we're still, still a little bit of ways, but I think everyone's on schedule. When you look at it, your team in the spring, your offense in practice, whatever OTAs, mm -hmm. how much more explosion do you see, and in, in what areas? Um, I, th I think a lot. A lot of the guys are um, they're doing a good job, you know, just fitting in the mix and uh, of the offense, and again, identifying that role and who they want to be in the offense. So again, it's kind of early to tell, but guys are guys are working. We didn't put the pads on yet, and when we do, I think those things will be a little bit more declarative. Um, as far as as far as the role side of it, but it's good to have you know there's some good influx of new guys and guys that have been here and know the offense and kind of bringing everyone together, and then the leadership we have on offense um, has been has been outstanding in, in bringing those guys along. How much of a priority was it for you as the offensive coordinator that you? I know you guys were pretty successful overall mm -hmm. in regards to big plays. I think you were last mm -hmm. 28, 20 plus yard pass plays. It's like, yeah. how much does that bother you, and how much was it a priority? We got to Make, make more splashes. Yeah. You, you definitely want you definitely want that to be a part of your offense. So, 
any area, whether it's the protection side of it, whether it's the decision making, whether it's the routes, the, the concepts, the scheme, you look at all that stuff. And I think that's one thing we kind of did a deep dive on is, you know, how can we, whether improve it to get some more of those opportunities or, um, or personnel it to get the right people in the right spots. But that's, you know, that's our job to make sure we do that the right way. Here's a picture of a Daniel Bellinger because he looks significantly. Yeah. You know that picture? I do. Yeah, yeah I've seen you that. Got a poster of it or anything? Like that? <laughs> what, what do you make of that picture? And, and did you guys have a make yeah. an effort to say you need to get a little bigger? Yeah, I mean, I know our, our strength staff. They do a good job of just you know talking with the players and developing a plan. Um, I'm not sure if Bellinger, you know, the bicep was you know the major part of that, but it surely, um, you know, he's done a nice job with that. He came in great shape. He's done a great job. He's taken a, a nice step from year one to year two, and he's continuing to grow, and that's, that's what we're looking for. What do you think uh, you guys got? Obviously, he added a tight end. Um, uh, what does that mean for Daniel? And maybe can it help him in some ways, maybe kind of mm -hmm. find a different role? Yeah, and th that's where we're at. We're kind of at that stage right now of just identifying what those roles are. You know, I don't think there's anything set in stone, and it's just going to continue to grow as we get through the offseason and the training camp and the season. Mike, let's go back to the Bellinger question mm -hmm. for a minute. Do you work with the, the um, strength and conditioning coaches and say, okay, I'm thinking of having this guy do, for example, more blocking than he needs to I mean, does that, is that a collaborative uh, relationship or do they just kind of do what's in the best interest of the player? Yeah, it's, it's collaborative. Um, it's definitely collaborative to answer your question. You know, you talk with the player, you talk with the coaches, they talk with the training staff and the medical staff and everyone kind of gets on the same page. That's, that's, how we, that's how we've worked it in the past. So um, again, Bellinger's one example of that. There's a lot of guys that are doing that. With Waller, with Waller, we've seen him do wide receiver drills, obviously, mm -hmm. in addition to being the yeah. tight end he is. Do you get hung up on any of that? Or is it just that he gives you more options because he's versatile? You know, we, we mix in a few, you know, tight ends and receivers and running backs. Everyone kind of has their spot on the field where we're working some of those routes. So those guys being a part of it is just, you know, a matter of getting on the same page with the quarterbacks and, and working some of those detailed routes and fundamentals. Last year at this time, you and Daniel were starting your relationship and, you know, starting to get that dialogue and communication. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, you were in Kansas City when there was a lot of continuity. I mean, how much is that continuity you think mm -hmm. could help you and Daniel specifically as far as you now are on the same page and you're start, you built something and you're still continuing to build it. Yeah, I think that's important. <clears throat> Anytime you can kind of get in the second year of the program, there's familiarity with the verbiage, there's still familiarity with the, co the communication, the conversations happen a lot faster. And then now we're just you know, working to streamline it, um, working to just be more efficient with it, efficient with the, um, the situations that we're asking them to be in and, and making those decisions. How about the familiarity with the person? You know what makes him tick. What, what yeah, makes him absolutely. Tick. That's 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 an, that's another big important part of it, and that's just our daily conversation. That's our daily um, the kind of the workflow that we that we've built together is is being on the same page and talking about certain things on the field, off the field. Um, yeah, and, and get to know each other at a different level. Yeah, he'll stop coming in early now that he's got his money. No, he's uh, he's <laughs> still one of the first ones in there. Uh, we I see him all the time, and they're early, early working. Do you have any uh, thoughts on the, the dead snap that John Michael Smith uses? Yeah, I, I've been, a, I mean, been around both dead snap, the regular snap, or I don't even know what you call it, just the laces snap, I guess. Um, in Kansas City, we had a lefty snapper. I mean, we've, I've been around enough just the comfortability and make sure it's accurate. At the end of the day, as long as the quarterback's good with it, that's all that matters, and you know that we don't have any of those exchanges. So it hasn't been an issue, and I think he's doing a good job, and nothing that um, I think is concerning. Does it have any kind of advantage, though, over the traditional snap? I think each guy's is a little bit different. You know, our centers, they all work different different techniques for it. It's just the comfortability for the each player. We've seen really. him kind of taking those first team mm -hmm. snaps at center. What is that relationship between him and Daniel been like, and what have you seen from him so far? Yeah, it's growing. It's growing just like all the guys that are in the mix there. Um, you know, Bre Bredesen and, you know, Lemieux and all those guys that are in there that are, that are doing a good job just about getting on the same page and over communicating. That's one thing we're stressing here, especially like there's this loud, we have to put in the crowd noise and the music and all that during practice. So um, we, we try to over communicate those things. There's a lot of communication, not just from the center to the quarterback, but down the line of scrimmage, talking to the tackles all the way out there and then communication all the way out to our receivers that are you know way outside the numbers. So there's a lot of communication on a given play. And so that's what, that's what we work on.
I just real quickly follow up on uh, Jalen yeah. what you've seen from him? Because I don't think you're Yeah, J- Jalen's doing a nice job. He's 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 right on schedule and he's 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 working. He's 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 growing. That's one thing you've seen from him from the first day and rookie camp to the next day, and then you're working through this phase three part of it is his growth as as just as in his familiarity and comfortability with the offense.